Okay, yeah, hello and um, welcome to another episode of the School of Poetry. And today we're going to have another interesting session together. We'll be talking on something very important uh, and it has to do with weight, especially weight of your broilers during the brooding period. So um, while we wait for people to join, let's just begin what uh, we have for today. Okay, so I'm going to be putting up the slide that we'll be using today. So we'll just um, start immediately. All right. Okay, so we'll be talking quickly on how to maximize uh, the weight of your broilers during the brooding period. Yeah, it's important that we know how to get the best out of our broilers when they are still very little because the conversion at that point is very high and it's going to be to your advantage if you are able to um, get the best weight possible during that period okay so i actually have a you know a couple of brothers uh, a batch that i used to test something out and it worked uh, really well so i'm just going to be sharing that with you uh uh, one thing I want us to understand is that if you can get excellent weight at uh, maybe the first week and the second week, chances are that throughout the rest of the breeding or throughout the rest of the rearing period, you're going to enjoy the results because the broilers have kind of started on a good um, page. Okay, so let's have... Um, a better view of what we have. Okay, yeah. So, how to get maximum weight of broilers during brooding. As you can see here, I actually got as I has 240, you know, after a random sampling of the birds, I got as I has 240 grams at week one. That's just seven days. In just seven days, I was able to get about 240 grams and I think tomorrow there will be two weeks, this particular set of beds. There will be two weeks. I've not even checked the weight. I actually just returned from um, Ibadan this evening. So I've not been with them for two days or so. Okay, so what are the things that we need to consider? If we say, okay, yeah, you can actually increase the weight of your brothers during the brooding stage. You can get the maximum weight. What are the things that you want to see? Okay, so I'll be showing you just that right now. So you see this video here. Okay, let me show that. All right, so I think this was what I took. Okay. So you can see, you can see these birds, they were picked at random and I put them inside that crate, and uh, I'm just taking their weights right now. That is day seven. So we're having most of them 220 something grams. You can see I'm returning them to that uh, brooder box. That brooder box was what I made some time ago to show you guys how to brood with no supplemental eat at all and it's working it's working real good even in this cold season all right so we are getting them okay this is saying 229 there about and um this one says okay so this one is more like uh, i think this is one i took the other time so i'm going to check it again to just confirm that the scale started from zero so we have 240. Yeah, that's a thumbs up for that chick. Yeah, it's a sh shooter. So it's 240 over there, 240 grams. And don't forget, I used to say this is 230 something grams. So don't, for don't forget, I used to say that you should get at week one, this is another 220. At week one, you should get minimum of times four of their initial weight when they were day old. And this one's where I couldn't check the weight at they would, but most of them, even if they are big, they will be like 40 something grams, maybe 42 or thereabouts. So, and this is more like the smallest among the ones that I chose. So, that's about 200 or 202 grams. So, that is what we have for that particular batch. I just picked 
them at random and sample them and that's what i got so i want to walk you through some things that helped to be able to achieve it with minimal cost i didn't have to use group promoter day and night as a matter of fact i just gave them the pineapple group promoter once just to see how they will react to it just once and they loved it so i didn't get to even use it after that one time i didn't want to really influence their group because i know not everybody will have access to the pineapple group promoter so i just wanted to know what's the best thing i could get from using this method so let's just go let's go ahead so we're going to be leveraging on space and the ventilation of course by leveraging on space and ventilation without compromising the comfort that your birds need yeah good evening and welcome mr olaleke so without compromising the comfort that the birds need we are leveraging on the space and ventilation so this is just a picture of what i used yeah i had about 90 birds here we have noilers and about 15 turkeys and then just two dozens of broilers yeah and like i mentioned in one in an, uh, a video i did earlier i think i said something like the bro the broilers are even raised to kind of feed my uh dogs so let's proceed and there's something we are trying to simulate here where right? this is something that is achievable achievable if you if you have seen the closed out system of broiler rearing you see that broilers are so close to each other yet the, there's nothing like each stroke and all that because the environment is controlled you know there is this cooling system that makes sure that the house is okay and uh, they are litter also. There's this system that ensures that it is dry all the time. So that's what we are trying to simulate. And um, okay, I think I should show you something very quickly. Uh, if we have, I'm coming a moment, please. Okay. So I want to show you what a closed house six uh, a closed system looks like. All right. So this would be what a closed house system looks like. All right. So you can see the brothers here. They are close to each other and they are just enjoying their life. So that's what the closed house system would be like but then you you may not be able to do this for your brothers when they get to three weeks of age because you just don't have that close out system and you will not be able to control the environment as uh, much as you would if you had a closed out system but then you can actually manipulate your way during the brooding period during the first say one week or even up to two weeks you can manipulate and get the best results that you could get actually those birds that you saw there i have kind of separated them they are not like this anymore the the, the broilers are separate now and the broilers and the turkeys are just together in this place so they can't just stay right now because they are bigger than this space can occupy or can, can contain so uh there are things to note this measure that I'm about to show you, it has its own pros and cons. So your ability to understand the advantages and disadvantages would help you to manipulate your way out and still get the results that you want. Because essentially, that is what we want to know. You want to be able to manipulate and, you know, you'll see the advantages and you'll just be wild. you want to try it. Regardless of whether you're using a cage system like this or you're using the deep litter, I'm going to show you everything and you'll be able to get similar results okay don't forget the at the back of everything you know we just want to get the maximum umbrella weight during brooding so let me just show you let's start with the cons let's start with the disadvantages that, the limitations that you could have if you're if you decide to just embrace this method i'm about to share with you so the litter gets wet quickly well we are trying to leverage on the space we don't want to allow them uh, to have so much space, you know, we want to give them the minimum space possible that will still provide them with the kind of comfort that they need to survive. So 
we are saying that the litter will get wet because so much of chicks are just pulling on the same area. So in no time, the place will be wet. So you may have to change the litter more often or you may have to improvise and find another way to ensure that the place is just dry because their poop will come with the urate and all that. So it's going to be wet in no time. So that's one thing you should know. The litter will get wet quickly. And then you need more attention is needed for the temperature and humidity regulation and control. You will need to actually know how to regulate the temperature and humidity. Because in the afternoon, because these guys are packed together, they are generating it already by themselves. And in the afternoon, the external temperature is just high and it's affecting them inside. So, you know, during brooding, most people just close everywhere. It's all sealed. But if you're using this kind of, if you're following this kind of method, you may at some point have to start, even on this day two, day three, you may have to open some part of your brooding house just to ensure that air is coming in. Because the hair, of course, is warm, so it doesn't cause any harm. However, if you have older birds, you don't want to open the side that is exposed to the older birds so that diseases from that side will not blow into the chicks brooding area. Okay, so then poor leg development if the calcium is not supplemented. Yeah? If the feed is not rich in calcium and you are also not supplementing calcium, because they don't get to move around so much, the exercise they are getting at that early stage is limited. So their legs may have issues if you don't take care of it. But there are ways to take care of it, so who cares? I have mine and they did pretty well, no leg issues. Of course, they are small, but even if they were more, I would be able to manage it. So no issues, no issues, no leg issues yet. All right, so disease spread is fast if cleanliness is not prioritized, you know. Because they are so close to each other, the disease that comes to this one is easily transferred to the next one, especially if it is this um, airborne diseases or the ones that once they just um, breed in the pathogen, it, uh, the, the chick gets infected. So it's easy to spread diseases. So you just try as much as possible to prevent diseases from breaking out. So I think that one too, we can do, we can, we can actually patch things around that. So dehydration from lack of water. Yeah. One thing I noticed is that I could not really give them the number of drinkers I would want to give them because uh, the space was limited. So they had one drinker, and that drinker often um, they finished the water quickly. So what I did later was to get a bigger drinker, a much bigger one, the 10 liters, so that it can serve them for a long time. So you may also want to consider that because if you just use a small um, drinker, <sighs> you may just find out that the water is finished quickly. And if you're not around to replace it, your chicks are thirsty and they're not converting feed at that time. So you have ruined the purpose of even stocking that density in the first place. So that's another one. And lastly on this list, I know there might still be some others. So if you think of anyone, you can just put it in the comment section. So lastly on this list, I have the fact that you can't have much space for enough feeders. Yeah, the feeders too, because of the limited space, you are not able to put as much feeders as you may want to put. Like in the case of those 90 birds, I only put two flip-top feeders, which were just adequate for, let's say, maximum of 28, 28. Yeah, I believe it's 28 O's. So maximum of, um, that's 56 birds. And then there were 90. So limited number of feeders however i ensure that they have feed almost all the time i know once a bird hits for about three minutes or maximum of five minutes the crop should be close to full and they don't really rush for the food so they give room for others to join so it's still good as long as the food is insufficient to uh still serve the ones that will be eating later on so all of them you know get to eat at once but within 10 minutes, all of them have gotten feed. So I think that too, I was able to handle it. So I was able to handle the litter issue. I changed the litter or, you know, I was using that floor, the cage, 
the suspended floor with the net. So the poop, the poop drops on the sawdust. Once that one gets bad, I top it up with another layer of sawdust. At some point, I even use this um, net, that plastic net to help their legs. And after I saw that um, the place was getting, uh, the net was getting blocked with the poop, I just decided to put shavings on the net. So at some point, even in the on the netted uh, floor, they had poop shavings. So the dropping was not falling again. So they used that for about three, four days. Can't remember exactly. Then I removed that. So by that time, their legs were big enough to stay on the net. So, you know, all those things I did. So I took care of the litter that was getting wet. I was available to take care of them during the early stage. So I was able to monitor the, <clears throat> the temperature and humidity. And I'm also going to be showing you one thing that you can use that will help you even when you don't have to enter into the chicken house all the time. So poor leg development, I can give them calcium supplement, of course. Uh, this is spread... I try as much as possible to, you know. One thing that I believe that I'm good at is spotting diseases before they really uh, take down the bird. So I, at some point, saw coccidiosis even at day four or so. And I noticed that during this period, a lot of people are reporting cases of coccidiosis even at day four, three, four. And that is strange. That's strange. But then once you see it, you just have to attack it. So that's another one. And the addition, I was always there to give water again and again and again and again. I don't mind. Even if it's four times a day until I got the bigger drinker. So, and uh, you can't have enough. Yeah, feed was always there. So I think all the cons that could have actually uh, ruined the purpose, I was able to address them. So now let's look at the benefits. The benefits, which is, of course, the thing, the real thing that we are looking for. So this prevents them from burning calories unnecessarily. You know, your birds are not coming to gym, so they don't have to run up and down. The, the target is to get them to that size that nobody can get, you know, in the shortest period possible. So what I did actually helped them to grow. You could see 200, up to 240, 220, 230 grams in just seven days. That's amazing. That's amazing. I know you could get more. You could get more. But then having 220, 200 as minimum, you know, 200, 202 as minimum, that's that's crazy. You know, there are people who would get 160. Even 160 is still good. But then we're able to get even 240. So that's awesome. So it promotes growth as most of the feed is used for growth. You know, it's not used for exercise. It's not used for other things. Mainly growth. They eat and their body just converts the feed into meat. So, you no, know, this is not an extensive or exhaustive um, list of the advantages that you get, but just a few to help you understand why somebody will be doing that. You know, that space, you look at them, it's like they're all choked together. You know, somebody will come in and say, ah, this place is not good, it's not good. You know? But as long as you're able to handle the, co the cons, that's the disadvantages, the challenges, then you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Like I said earlier, also, you are trying to simulate that closed out system where they, have, they can be so close to each other, one another, but then because the environment is controlled, which you too have to do that control part of it. So I'll show you something in a bit. Uh, it reduces the need and cost of supplemental eating. I tell you, you know, I was using lantern. I got a lantern just to prove a point, you know, to show which is more important. Uh, eat or feed at some point. So I did have that video, I think, some seven days ago, uh, less than two weeks ago, of course. So you can also watch that video. So after using the lantern for about four days, I stopped using it. I still have kerosene inside the lantern as we speak. So during this cold season, you know, some people will brood for eight days, ten days, but just four days and no more eat required. So they are just good and that has saved some money there so you might just be getting some extra cash in the business okay so birds hardly suffer from cold they warm up one another so that's another thing you know it's just all intertwined 
Um, total brooding cost is minimal, even in cold season that you're supposed to burn in gas, so much of it, you know. It doesn't mean that if you're using this method, you have to use lantern. Of course, I said you can do it on a deep litter. You can do it with 1,000 birds, 10,000 birds. The essential truth is you reduce the space that you get. I see a lot of people, they are raising birds in their three days, four days, and there's just like a whole lot of space for 100 meters race on the farm. So that's not so good because they'll just be running up and down and they end up growing like cockerels. And you say, ah, this supplier has given me cockerel. No, you gave them too much space that they became parrots instead of being broilers. All right, so we have the last one on this list. Weight per week is superb. Yeah, you don't get 240, 220, 230, a minimum of 200 grams in one week, and you say it's not superb. That's excellent, actually. Uh, you could you could get better, you could get more, but that is already excellent. So that's another amazing thing that you will get. And several others. I want you to just put it in the comment section if you think of any other one. Yeah, thank you for enjoying me. Uh, Faith, thank you so much. Uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. So these are the pros that you could get, the benefits that you could get, and they are wholesome. So let me see if you think of anyone, and I'm going to be taking a few questions today because I need to really rush to catch up with something. Uh, don't forget, this is the first Friday of the month, and normally we're not supposed to have the School of Poetry, but because I've not really been consistent in doing some of the things that I wanted to do, so I decided to just let you guys have this one. Okay, so I think it's time to take your questions. Okay, yeah. Before that, some equipment to help you to aid the um, to aid the work that you're doing to help you to get the kind of results that you you want to get. You might need your smart thermohygrometer, that device that measures temperature and humidity. This will actually solve the problem of heat and uh, ventilation for you. Because you are able to track, oh my God, I'm not with the thermometer right now. Okay, I'll just take a moment off to quickly get the thermometer and show you something quickly. Okay, but then before then, let me just be done with this one then. Once I'm gone, once I'm off the screen, as many of you that will have um, questions, just... Um, <clears throat> Just drop them in the comment section before I come back. So you need your thermal hygrometer to monitor your temperature and the smart one will really help you so that you don't get to enter into the chicken house all the time. You can just check it on your phone. I have the app here. Do I really need to get, let me see if I should just show you something here. So this is the app. I'm trying to load my own device. So this device, I think I'm, I might be so far away from heat right now. It's in the car outside. Let me see. I think we are offline. You can't really see it. Okay. So I'll just pick it. I'll make sure it's close by and show you everything. So you also need a suitable eating device. Like in this case, the ones I did here... In this case, I use, you know, I use a lantern because of this Buddha box that I use. So you need a suitable eating device. If it's a deep litter, you could use your electric Buddha, could use your gas Buddha, you know, you could use your charcoal. If you're still using charcoal, of course, I don't really encourage charcoal, but then some people still use charcoal. That's what they can use. That's what they have to use. And uh, they don't really mind about the carbon monoxide that they are inhaling, uh, you know, the, the risk of burning the whole flock, you know, they are maybe they are able to actually mitigate against that. But then just use the suitable eating device that you have. Okay, so and then suitable drinker. I would have been happier if I had maybe a nipple drinker connected inside the chicks brooder box. 
So that would have removed the issue of, okay, me going there to replace or refill the water almost every four or five hours. So if I have the automatic drinker or a nipple drinker wired or connected there, that would have removed my uh, entry into the place uh, at the frequency that I did. So you could just do this. You be have, you need to be available at least. You need to be around. But then you could do it without entering the place too many times. So you just monitor the temperature on your on your phone. You make sure that the drinkers are automatic, so you don't have to refill water all the time. Just put it there in the morning. If you are taking any medication, put it there and let them have it. And you have a suitable eating device mostly in the night. You don't really need it during the day, except maybe it's raining. And even when it's raining, if you use, if you manage your space very well, at some point you may not even, after three days, you will not need to give them supplementary aid, except if your environment is so cold, you know. So you still need to know the right temperature for them. Okay, so I'm going to quickly rush to get the thermometer now to show you in case you have not seen it. So let me just uh, go off screen for, it's just gonna be like one minute or thereabouts. One minute should do here. Yeah? Okay. I have the thermometer here. Sorry, you know, I just came back from Ibado. You know, I did, um, we did this chick supply yesterday and um, I had to do some things after that. So I just returned today, this evening around seven. So I needed to rush and prepare for the school of poetry. So this is the device I was talking about. In case you have not seen it before. Okay. This is what it looks like. Okay, this light is playing, yeah, it's playing pranks on me. Okay, so this is what it looks like. <clears throat> so you can you can read the temperature and the humidity, and this is what the pack looks like in case you are interested in getting it. We have um, still have a couple of them to push out to you. So you can actually set <clears throat> your mobile device to alert you after you set a minimum and maximum, you can see that red alert here. So my phone is already connected because it's close to it. So you can set the minimum temperature and the maximum limit of temperature. You can do that, that same thing for the humidity. So even when you're far away, maybe for one day, maybe somebody else is managing the place for you. Once you come back and you check your phone, it gives you a rundown of what the temperature has been since you left, since you last left. 
So, <clears throat> like, I was not around on Thursday. Throughout Thursday, I was not around. Friday, today, I just returned around 7. But if I check, okay, if I check the weekly report, I would see for both temperature and humidity, you see the graph of how it was. Now, I set the minimum and maximum. So, you'd see a moment, please. So I just connected this to the device on, I think, some days ago. So you see a graph, yeah, that shows you those red parts means they were out of the limit that I set, and the blue part means they were within the range. So it's same for both temperature and humidity. This is a weak, um, a weak report. This is a weak report. From the time that I started it, I connected with this. The device is actually new. This is a new one. The one I was using before somebody begged me to sell it to them. So with something like this, you can actually monitor the temperature. Let me go back to what it reads now. So this is what the temperature is reading now. 33 degrees C, 60.2. Okay, 61.2, 62. The humidity is really changing because I just came into the um, studio right now. So from the car environment to this place, so it's changing. Even the temperature will be adjusting real fast. All right. So um, and the temperature, you can see it's red. That means it is higher than the limit I set. If it's also lower, it's going to be red. I think the limit I set was uh, 31. I'll just check that right now. Okay. A moment, please. Just trying to help you to understand how it works. Okay, so this is the limit for the temperature. The lower limit is 26. The upper limit is uh, 32. You can see there. So it's going to show red if it is higher than 32. It's going to show red if it is lower than 26. Yeah. So within that, it's going to be green or blue. So you would know when things are okay. And it also alerts you once the temperature is out of range, you get that red alert. That red alert I saw when I entered or when I just brought it inside here. Since it was higher than my minimum, <clears throat> you see that same alert. Excuse me. All right, so I don't waste much of your time. It's actually go v, uh, It goes for fourteen thousand naira per piece. A pack like this has two inside of it, so you can decide to pick two. If your if your brother house is big, you may decide to pick two and just play them as strategic locations. And your a phone, just one phone can manage the two actually so it's two inside it comes with the battery and the manual so if you're getting one i'll probably not put the carton if there's no carton probably i've given somebody the carton and if you don't get the manual i will send you as um, a soft copy i'll send you the manual soft copy so you can still do pretty much everything you need to do with the device so you can connect it with both the Android and your iOS. I used to use it with the Android before and now the iPhone and it's still working perfectly. All right, so you need that and you need your suitable eating device. You may need a gas brooder. It could be any type. It could be the 1,000 capacity, 2.5 capacity, any capacity you need. Just, you know, do whatever you need to do to um, enjoy it. So... In summary, we are minimizing space and not compromising the comfort of our beds. Somebody will come in and tell you, oh, this space is not adequate. But then if you are able to guide against the cons, the disadvantages, the challenges, we are putting on screen again. Yeah, you can see them here. If you are able to guide against them, then you are good to go. But if you cannot, if you cannot prevent these things from happening, just don't try it. Don't try. Just use it normal space requirements you know and you still get good results it doesn't mean you won't get good results but you may not be able to get as much as this because 
if you can't guide against these things, you will actually be hurting the birds. They may come down with diseases. If ventilation is not enough, that alone is very bad for growth. They won't grow as much as they should. All right, so let me quickly take some questions. I've already taken a long time. Okay. The pineapple formula I was talking about, somebody is asking me to share the pineapple formula I was talking about. Uh, that's, I, I have a video on it. If you just check my Brother Group Promoter video, you can check the playlist and you see the pineapple video there. Uh, should I try to put it up? Let me see if I can just um, help you with the link. Okay. Okay, I'll share the link shortly. All right, so I'll put the link in the comment section right now. So that's the link to the pineapple growth promoter video. So I'm seeing another question here. My chicks are three weeks now. Suddenly they started feeling like they are in shock. They just get stretched out and die at maybe a day after. What should I do to help? Okay. Um, I don't know exactly what you mean by they start doing like they're in shock. Are they shivering? Uh, they, they don't even die immediately when they feel like they're in shock. They die a day after. So I don't quite understand. So if you want me to understand better, you could just send a WhatsApp message. You could send a short video of it and um, I'll be able to help you. Yeah. Somebody reported a case of chickens flipping over uh, and dying. You know, that's kind of instant. You know, they feel somehow and they just flip over and die. They were five weeks old. They have been doing excellently well. At that five weeks, they were 2.4, 2.2, 2.3 kg, you know, average. So they, they were doing really good. But then they started dying. And somebody reported that and I gave them a solution and it worked. I told them not to feed in the afternoon and I told them to give ACV for two days. Uh, from the first day they started giving the ACV, that thing stopped. So feeding in the afternoon sometimes when the birds are over three weeks can be detrimental. You know? In our environment, in our climate in Nigeria now, even though it's not sunny, the temperature is still high. You could be getting up to 30 degrees. 30 degrees is high for broilers. That is 30 degrees environmental temperature. Within the broiler house, it's going to be higher because they are also generating heat. So before you know it, it's already 37 degrees within the broiler house. If you put your thermometer right on the floor, floor level, at the broiler level, you know. See, the temperature right here in this place is 31. So that's crazy. 31 and no, rainy season, 31. 31 is high. So definitely feeding them in the afternoon would generate more heat. And not many of us are using cooling system in our broiler houses. So it's a challenge. So the best time to feed your broilers are uh, actually in the morning and in, in the night. In the afternoon, if they are going to heat at all, it should be just be a little. And you should give them uh, electrolytes that will help them to balance and regulate their temperature. So ACB was one thing I recommended and I gave them the dosage. I think I, I gave them 10 meals to four liters of water and it just worked perfectly it was like magic to the to the bird so i wouldn't know exactly what the problem is so just send me a visual video to help me understand i think i'll take about three more questions and um, before we end the session today oh uh, thank you thank you for your yeah, thank you for your prayers. God bless you too. I'm trying to get another question right now. Yeah. Feel free, just feel free to send me a WhatsApp message. I'll leave my number on the screen for a few moments, uh, for a few seconds and Zero seven zero six four nine five three seven three eight. Please, I prefer messages. So feel free to ask me 
I'll, I could send you pictures and all that. All right. So 0706495373. It is also usually in my video description. So you could just go to any video and you will see my WhatsApp number. Okay. So I want to take three more questions. Um, Okay, this person is asking, I'm not sure if it was before I mentioned, okay. Good evening, sir. It's, is it okay to give ACV and multivitamin before vaccination? Mm, I wouldn't really recommend it. If you are giving those two, it should be for a particular purpose. But anytime you want to vaccinate, a day before the vaccination, you, shouldn't, you don't even need to give them multivitamins or anything. Plain water before vaccination. If at all you can't do it a day before, Several hours, at least 12 hours before the vaccination, there should be nothing. Just plain water. That's okay for them. And after the vaccination, throughout the rest of that day, just plain water. It's okay for the birds. The second day, you can give multivitamins. So you don't want to give any of these things close to when you are vaccinated. All right. So uh, two more questions before we go. Yeah, on my WhatsApp, okay, the, the price for the thermo, smart thermometer is um, 14,000 naira for one. Okay, I'm trying to, okay, somebody is complaining about flu here. Okay, so how do I prevent and cure flu? I don't believe you're talking about chronic respiratory disease that uh, leads to coughing, sneezing, you know, and that chappy sound produced by birds. Okay, so you can actually prevent it with drugs, both organic medications and um, the synthetic medications. So. There are drugs like tylosine based, gentamicin based that undo it, and um, also organically. I have, I have a video that talks about how to treat CRD organically. So you can, you can also check that out on my channel. <clears throat> and don't forget, if you are yet to subscribe to this channel, DIY Hard Greek is your number one animal scientist and your poultry success partner. So you'll be doing yourself a lot good by subscribing to the channel. And also, you want to hit that notification bell so that you will not miss out on any upload. Um, also, for this stream, for this live stream, please do well to click that like button so that YouTube can push it out to many other farmers to enjoy. Okay. I'm mounting for... Yeah, can one rely on organic vaccine? I don't know exactly what you mean by organic vaccine. I know I've made a video where I talked about aloe vera and tried to compare it, if it could replace vaccines. But, you know, some people still have this misconception. So I don't know from what angle you are coming from when you say organic vaccine. However, when you're using, when you are doing organic poultry and you have your arsenal of herbs, you have everything, you can actually do it without vaccine. I've raised birds here without vaccine several times. So one thing you need to be sure of is your biosecurity. If your biosecurity is not tight, even when you're vaccinating, you are still joking. So biosecurity is very, very key. But if you have also had a uh, history of um, a particular viral invasion, probably you've had some batches of broilers come down with Newcastle disease or Gumboro. You may want to vaccinate, you know. But if you have not had any of such history and your biosecurity is tight, come on, you can do without vaccines. So you can rely on it if your biosecurity is tight. I would say that with 99.9% um, .9 assurance. All right. So I think I want to take one more question before we call it a day. Ooh, ooh, 
Bam, 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 bam. If you notice something, you will see this local stream yard powered by stream yard. You know, you see it on the live stream. And um, a couple of other features may not also be available. Uh, that's because I'm using the free version today. This software actually costs um, some money. Uh, it's a monthly based subscription. So some that's one of the things that DIY is doing to ensure that you guys are gaining access to the School of Poetry um, on a weekly basis. But this time, I think, for some reason, I was not able to renew the subscription. You know, Nigeria, you can't just use your Naira card to subscribe. Once the payment is over $20, you can pay. And this one is actually over $20 a month. So I couldn't pay the card I was using before. That's a French card. That one too, I don't, I don't know. I think it was out of fund and he was not able to fund it. Even though I had, <clears throat> I had money to send to him, but he was not able to fund it with dollars. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's the reason why you're seeing that logo and there are some other features that I cannot just uh, enjoy right now. So... I'll try as much as possible to get my dollar card ready. All right. So one more question I'm not seeing. Okay. And a day before session. Yeah, I, I, I see this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes your vaccination schedule, you're trying to fix some uh, things into the bed's uh, diet and all that and their medication. So you that might be one of the reasons why I did that. But then before the... If I do that, I'm sure in the evening I would want to remove that um, water so that they can have access to plain water before the vaccination. You don't want any strange to be in their system while the vaccine is also coming. So for for what do they call it now? For multivitamin, still quite cool. But then a few hours before they have the vaccine, you want to remove it too. So just try to do that and you will enjoy your practice. All right. So if you want to boost turkey weight, I'm seeing one that just came in right now. If you want to boost turkey weight, just give them... Quality nutrition. Turkeys need more than the protein level that the chickens would take and be fine. They need more than that. They can take as high as 26% protein from their starter stage. So you want to give them all the protein that they want if you want to enjoy them. And the boosters that work for brothers also work for turkeys. So I've tried it and, you know, get over 20 kg turkey um, weight in um in a couple of months so i think that's it and that's where we'll be ending the session this evening i need to quickly run now and um, catch up with something so i really appreciate you guys for joining this is once again diy agri your number one animal scientist and your poultry success partner those who know me well would know that this guy is stressed he needs to he needs to rest okay so I've, I've enjoyed some crazy traffic this um, evening, you know, driving down from Ibadan towards Lagos. That's um, Long Bridge after uh, MFM, you know, almost two hours traffic and all that. So thank you all for joining and, uh, you know, I'll see you very soon. Okay, so good night and bye. If you want to get the thermometer, don't forget, I, I'm just going to leave the number to chat up on the screen now. Uh, where is that? Um, uh, oh, oh, okay. I'll put the number on the screen now. That's the number to chat up, and um, it can be sent to you actually any location you are within Nigeria, or it can be available to you. Okay, so that's it, and um, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.